Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about dependency records in the CUCM. A really important topic, especially when you want to make changes to your CUCM's configuration, you're likely going to run into issues that can potentially be a pain to deal with, but could also be really easy to solve as long as you know how to look at and understand dependency records. Now the best way to explain what I mean here is to just go ahead and demonstrate the problem. And I'm going to use uh, perhaps an overly simplistic example, but that shouldn't matter. The, the process is the same. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and configured a device pool for Kobe Japan using the same settings that I used in a previous video. So now let's say, just for the sake of argument, that I want to delete the region in this device pool. Let's say uh, the office is moving, uh, it's moving to Singapore or somewhere, and maybe I've already set up my Singapore phones and I just don't need the, the Kobe region anymore. So I want to go in and delete it and uh, kind of tidy things up a bit. So we'll go to System, Region Information, then Region. I'll click Find, and here's my Kobe region. So I'll select the checkbox, then click Delete Selected. Then I get this warning that it can't be undone, so we'll click OK. But oops, we get this error message here, and the message basically means that we can't delete this region because some other record is using it or, or relies on it, and uh, we'll have to change or delete that dependency first. So what we can do now is let's go ahead and click on it, and then we'll go up to Related Links, now we can select dependency records and then go. However, we're going to get this message that the dependency records feature is disabled, and that's because it's disabled by default. But of course, we can go in and enable it under the enterprise parameters. So let's let's go ahead and do this now. We'll we'll close that. Then we'll go to system enterprise parameters. And we'll go down here in the second block under CCM Admin Parameters, and we can see Enable Dependency Records. So one really important thing to stress here is that this setting is not actually enabling or disabling dependencies. It's simply allowing you to see what dependencies exist. The dependencies are actually always there. Uh, this just allows us to see them. Now, the default value is false, so we're going to set this to true. And now we get this warning message about high CPU usage uh, with turning this feature on. But we'll click OK here, and then we'll save. Now let's go back to Region Information, Region. And let's click on our Kobe region here. And then we'll go back up to Related Links and select Dependency Records from the dropdown and click Go. Now this time what we get is this summary window, and it tells us how many records are using the Kobe region and, and what that record is. In this case, it's only one. Uh, and then we can see that it's being used in a device pool. And if we click this device pool, we can see exactly which one. And of course, no surprise, it's in the Kobe device pool. And then what's really neat about this tool is that if you click on Kobe underscore DP, it'll take us straight into the device pools configuration page. So from here, I can see that sure enough, the, the Kobe region that I'm trying to delete is in the device pool. So if I want to delete my Kobe region, I'll have to either change this setting in the Kobe device pool or delete it altogether. So you know what, I, f I figure the office is moving to Singapore and I don't need this Kobe device pool either. So, so maybe that's the best thing to do. Let's just uh, go up here and delete the Kobe device pool as well. Uh, that way I can then later uh, delete the region and just sort of clean things up a bit. So I'll click delete, then OK. But oops, once again, I've got the same warning message. But I've got dependency records turned on now, so what I can do is I can just quickly come up here to Related Links, as before, select Dependency Records, and then Go. So now I've got another summary showing me a record count and a record type, so now I can see that I actually have two records using this device pool, and of course the type is Phone. So I can click either one of these, and it looks like we've got First Phone and Second Phone. Now, if I click first phone, that'll take me straight to the phone configuration page where I can change the device pool or, or just delete the phone altogether. And I think in this case, I'll just go ahead and delete the phone uh, just to make it easy. So we'll click delete, then OK. For the second phone, I can just click find. 
And here I can just select second phone from the list. I'll delete that, click OK, and we're finally free to get rid of the device pool and the region for Kobe. So let's go back over to System, Device Pool. We'll check the Kobe device pool here, then go up and click Delete Selected, and then OK. Great, we've successfully deleted our device pool. Now we can go up to Region Information, Region, then we'll check the box next to the Kobe region, then Delete Selected, and OK. And now our region has been successfully deleted as well, and we're all set. Okay, so again, this is a really simplistic example. In a real situation, you're likely going to have multiple layers of dependencies, and a device pool, for example, it might be applied to more than just a phone. It could be applied to uh, gateways, conference bridges, transcoders, or whatever. The bottom line is that without this feature, it would be a tremendous burden trying to figure out where all of these dependencies exist within any given configuration. So it's really an indispensable tool for configuring and, and maintaining the CUCM. So that's dependency records. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.